This is the application for the NetView Birdify feeder. Here we can see my bird feeder right here at the top. There are several icons along the bottom. Starting off with the right icon, that is a quick way to access our settings right from the homepage of the application. Next to that, you see a bell with a red icon on it. That is the notifications area letting you know, hey, there's something that you need to go and look at right now. And then here we have what looks like a rewind button. And if we select that, I'm gonna start with that one so you can see what it actually does. Here it brings you to a timeline of events, allowing you to move to a specific event and then having it play for you. And then once your timeline is done, you can bring it all the way to live stream right there by selecting live stream. We can also zoom in on the timeline in case there's multiple events in a short window. So there we go, it's loading up. And in the upper left-hand corner, there is a date. If we select this, we can choose any one of the blackened dates, letting us know, hey, we can go back and grab some information from that date. Also, you'll have unseen notifications with the little dot under the specific date icon. We're gonna select back and come back to our main homepage here. From here, I'm going to select our notifications icon because that's primarily what you're getting this for. You wanna be notified and have that AI assist help with bird information. Well, here we can see this is from today. Right now, that is not actually a bird. That is somebody walking in my backyard. So if I select that, it loads up the clip and it's letting you know this was a motion clip and that is actually me walking through my backyard. So you could see, even though you're mainly getting this as a bird feeder or bird monitoring device, you can actually use it as a home security device and the angle of the camera can be changed. Right now I have it for 100% show me as much bird activity as possible, but you could tilt this forward a little more and get more of my backyard there. On this screen, we have the ability to toggle the volume right here, mute it and turn it off. We have the ability to set full screen mode, allowing me to see everything everything. I can download this clip right there by pressing that and I can also share this clip right there and it'll bring up any apps that allow you to share. I'm going to select back and we're going to find one that actually is an AI event. So here we go. These are just motion triggers. Here's an AI trigger. Selecting that, we'll open it up and hey, there's a bird. You'll notice that it is rather short because the bird kind of kind of ducks out of view. But if we notice right here, there's a new button. It says show AI pick. So if I do that, it will identify this bird. So it's saying this is a house finch. There's several different options. Well, here we can see it changes from being a house finch to a house sparrow to a pine siskin. I'm saying that horribly wrong. And that's all based on the AI. So it's not going to be 100%. However, if we come back to the house finch and I select it, it's going to give you Wikipedia information about that house finch. Maybe this house sparrow. Again, Wikipedia information about that. And then our last bird that it thinks it is, Wikipedia. So you can actually use this as a way of proofing the information that you're getting from the AI. So we're gonna come down to another AI event. We'll select that just so we can see. It loads up. Notice this is a 20 second clip right there. And if I do the AI, house finch, house finch, house finch. So this one, besides a house finch, it could be a purple finch. So this one is a little more clear and that's based on the angle that the camera sees. So if the bird's really close, hey, it gets a lot of angles. You can see the birds checking things out. It will give the AI a chance to do what it's supposed to do. It'll give it more opportunity. From here, under my notifications area, in the upper right-hand corner, there is an edit icon, which will allow me to toggle and delete, where I can delete everything without tapping little buttons, or I could select delete selected simply by tapping. I can come up here and select cancel, and then come back to my devices. Now, all of those clips are saved on my device locally. There is a micro SD card in the camera itself, and that's where they're being stored. Before we get into the options for the camera, we're gonna select the camera itself to show you what it can do. Right here, you can see this is a snapshot of the last time I viewed my camera. So it was dark, I was checking it out in a rainstorm. So we're gonna click on that. It is going to connect to the camera, and we'll give that a moment to load up. And while it's doing that, you'll notice right here, we've got the name of my camera, which can be changed. You can see the battery status right there, as well as we have a share option right there and our settings. So that's supposed to be a sprocket icon. The three dots is another way that you can access your camera settings area, which we'll get to in a moment. Right here on the screen, you can see it shows time and date as well as that this is live. I can toggle the sound on and off from here. I can make an audible alarm. <laughs> You have the ability to turn on spotlights for the camera itself. Let's say you don't want to rely on the IR mode at night. You could simply come in here and toggle on the white light. Once you do that, the light indicator will look thusly. And because this is in the daytime, it's a little tricky to see that that light is actually on. But trust me, that's what that's for. You'll notice you can 
press, which will allow you to talk through the camera. What I want you to notice is not here is any semblance of a record button or photo snapshot. You're only going to be able to view the camera live. You can change the view so that you get more of it taking up space on your phone. And then from here, you have access to a snapshot and it's saved to the album and then takes a while to go away. A little on the annoying side, but we come back and then here there is a record button. So you actually have to bring the app into the full screen mode before you can actually capture what's going on. Now, if you're using this for a bird, that's not a terrible thing. And there it's saved to the photo album. If you're using that to keep track of birds, it's not that big a deal. But if you're using this as a surveillance feature, along with bird watching, the fact that it does not have something like a quick launch here or here, I don't understand the design behind that, but uh, just know you have to enlarge and then you get access to those record features. Now, if we come up to our settings, which again can be accessed either from the sprocket icon or the three dots, here we could see the name of my camera, the Wi-Fi status, the status of the device, and the location. Selecting the arrow here will allow us to change the camera name, the location, battery level, well, you can't really do anything there, but it's letting you know it's fully charged. Here we have my Wi-Fi name, the Wi-Fi strength, its location, and then I could select more information, but there's sensitive information in there, so I won't show you that. To the left over here, we have motion detection, which is our motion sensitivity. Selecting this, I have it turned on, but we can also select a range, high, medium, and low, as to how sensitive you would like the motion detection to be. Even at medium, I get most of the birds that come into my bird feeder. Next to that, we have SD card, and this is going to show you along that timeline all the clips that the SD card has. Selecting back, we have our sleep setting coming in here. You have the ability to turn on and off sleep mode. If you turn on sleep mode, it's almost like privacy mode. So the camera will not be view viewable, the alarm won't sound, and the camera is just there, not doing anything. You can turn on a schedule and then go into our schedule setting and then add a sleep plan. So you'll be able to select what days of the week and what time the sleep schedule should start, meaning, hey, you want it to go to sleep during the day when you're around and don't necessarily want to be caught on camera, you can do that. Don't necessarily want it going off overnight, you could set that. And I enjoy the flexibility that this camera offers because it is both a bird watching and security device. I'm gonna stress that a lot during this, that it does multiple things. Coming down, we have our firmware info. Selecting that will just let you know, hey, is the firmware of my camera up to date? In my case it is, so I don't have to do anything. Here we have my SD card management. I have a 32 gig card in there, and you can see three gigs of the 29 usable gigs. If I want, here's a visualization. I can format the card from here, which will erase all the data on it. Would not recommend doing that unless you are first initializing your card in this camera. Coming down, we have our light settings. Selecting this, well, we want the indicator light on the camera. I have that turned off because I just don't want to spook my birds. Here we have our flashlight alarm. This will have the lights on the camera flash when motion is detected. Good for home monitoring and surveillance, not so much with the birds. So I have that off. Here we have our night vision mode. So we have night vision on or off. And then how do we want that? In my case, I currently have the infrared. So using IR lights to see, I can select the white light mode, meaning it will turn on the LEDs when it detects motion. And we have our light sensitivity, high, medium, and low. So you've got a choice of, do you want to see things in black and white with the IR, or do you want to have color? The one problem that I found with the color night vision using the LEDs, because the basket where the food is, is white, that can wash out the camera's view in the distance, depending on how you have the camera angled. Just a FYI. Moving on, we have audio settings, audible alarm. After an alarm siren is turned on, the camera will automatically sound an alert when the motion sensor is triggered. So if there's something that walks in front of this, it will automatically sound the alarm. And then we have camera voice language, plenty to choose from, and then voice volume, low to high. Coming down, we have more. Well, here are more settings. We have net view protect, turning that on. Well, you could see that by purchasing this camera, you get an extended warranty, and I have an extended warranty until 2073, which as morbid as it sounds, will outlive me. Here we have motion alerts. Do I wanna get alerted when there's motion? I do. Motion alert filter coming in here. Well, you'll notice I do not have any option to choose some of these other ones because some things require a subscription. There are a lot of things that this camera can do without a subscription, but once you get into alerts for specific AI events, including 
expert identification, you're not going to be able to do that. Right now, I have all notifications and then I go back and look through my video clips and use the AI detection there to figure out what the bird is. Here we have our cooldown timer, constant, send, 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 for one hour in between trigger, and then pin this device to the top. So on the NetView page, because the bird feeder is only a small portion of what NetView offers, if I wanted the bird feeder to always be on top, this is where I would come to do that, and I would turn that option on. Coming down, we have advanced setting. Anti-flicker, selecting that. Some countries operate on different hertz frequencies for LEDs. By enabling anti-flicker and selecting your hertz range for your region, it will prevent the camera from flickering and make it easier to see. Just know that's what that's for. Installation settings, well, here it's showing me a live view. I can rotate the image, and there we see the image is upside down. I can rotate it back, and then we have our installation guide, and it's gonna walk you through all the steps for installation. I will admit there are a lot of options for installation that NetView gives you with this particular bird feeder camera. And we're not gonna let that load up. We're gonna select back and back and come back to our area here. Down at the bottom, we have the ability for sharing. That's my admin info and then camera share. Selecting that will show a QR code that you can share with somebody else. Keep in mind, they will need their own NetView account in order to share your device. And all the way down here at the bottom is remove camera. And we are going to come back to our front page here because that's everything that we can do with the camera. Now let's quickly go over some of the options of the main NetView app. Upper right hand corner, plus sign, that's how you would add a device to your account. Right here, we're on our home page. If I select the search icon, well, this will let me search for stuff from NetView. Here we could see discovery, or I can come over here, caught on NetView, so this is cool. You'd be able to go through and see some cool things that other people have gotten. You can also choose to upload yours to be featured on this page. The cloud icon, well, this is your plans or offerings from NetView. And in my case, I have one subscription, which is the Birdify recognition system for life. And that is just with the AI when you're looking at clips. That is not the push notification. From here, you can see previous plans and expired plans. So if you're wondering where those are, that's where it is. Here we have the plans. NetView Connect, continuous recording, event recording, AI skills, essential detection, includes human pet animal vehicle, or if you're getting this to identify birds, you want your bird recognition. That's $5 a month. Order detection, indoor detection, and then intelligent notification. And then all the way at the bottom, human detection. So those are all of the services that you can get. Moving on, you have your shopping. So that's gonna let you see, hey, here are all the things that you can get from them. And here you can see, while I'm recording this, we're getting ready to have some sales on this particular camera bird feeder. All the way down here in the right hand side, that little person is going to bring you into your account information. At the top, you'll have your profile picture as well as your email address, which is why it's out of frame. You have coupons, forum, reviewer program, Alex A device skills, FAQ, support, more, and then log out of your overall NetView account. And that was everything that you can do for the NetView Birdify feeder using the NetView 